Welcome to the April edition of NTV. I'm Sharon Bennett. And I'm Terry Kakita. We're reporting from the View and Hoffman substation in North Seattle. This substation serves approximately 10 square miles of our residential service territory and came into service in 1977. This was the first substation to have extensive public involvement, a process City Light has continued with other projects and processes. The substation was also the first to incorporate artwork through the 1% for Art program. We'll be taking a look around here during this month's edition of NTV. April brings another transition to City Light and a new org chart reflecting the new wholesale and retail branches of the utility. The retail branch consolidates the electrical services and construction branch and the customer accounts and energy services branch. And it's a whole lot easier to say. The new retail branch includes nearly two-thirds of the utility's employees, those of you who are most directly involved with the customer's electrical service. Retail functions include electrical services and construction, customer accounts, facilities management, energy management services, field services, major accounts, the apprenticeship program, and consumer research and evaluation. The wholesale branch includes engineering, power management, resource planning, operations, and Skagit operations. There are some staff transitions during this time of change. First of all, longtime Deputy Superintendent Malcolm Mac McDonald retires in mid-April, completing many years of service with the utility. He guided us through the shoals from the time Superintendent Randy Hardy left City Light until Roberta Palm Bradley took the helm. As you enter the placid waters of retirement, we wish you well, Mac. Terry, it's no secret that the utility is going through some rough times right now. That's right, Sharon. Two seasons of drought left us seeking a rate increase to cover revenue usually gained from surplus sales. Customers vocally opposed the rate proposal at a public hearing, and the council approved the utilities committee's call for a smaller 17% rate increase effective May 1st with a 15% rate increase in 1994. A 4.1% temporary surcharge remains until the end of this year. This is less than the mayor and utility proposed and is based on optimistic weather forecasts, an adjustment in bookkeeping, and debt refinancing. Budget cuts are being made to deal with the rate increase. The utility is also in the process of right-sizing, looking at functions to streamline operations and determine how best to carry Seattle City Light into the 21st century. Each of us is concerned about how we'll be affected by the changes. To help you sort through the rumors, we've started an open line, a telephone update service that answers your questions about what's happening at City Light, investigates your questions, and responds to your inquiries. The number is 233-8749. There's also a series of all-employee forums with the superintendent and the executive team scheduled in April. Here are the dates and locations. Wednesday, April 21st, Boundary. Thursday, April 22nd, 8 a.m. to 9.30 a.m., South Service Center, Multipurpose Room. Friday, April 23rd, 8 to 9.30 a.m., South Service Center, Multipurpose Room. Monday, April 26th, 8 to 9.30 a.m., South Service Center, Multipurpose Room. Monday, April 26th, 1 to 2.30 p.m., Arctic Building, Dome Room. Monday, April 26th, 3 to 4.30 p.m., Arctic Building, Dome Room. Wednesday, April 28th, Skagit, Courier Hall. Thursday, April 29th, 8 to 9.30 a.m., North Service Center Auditorium. Friday, April 30th, 8 to 9.30 a.m., North Service Center Auditorium. Friday, April 30th, 2.30 to 4 p.m., North Service Center Auditorium. Be sure to attend the forum at your work location. It's a chance to ask questions in person and get first-hand information on the direction of the utility. Spring weather shows off these whirly gigs to their best advantage here at the substation. And you know, Terry, I heard the Seattle Mariners aren't the only ones who spent time in training camp this spring. Intensive training took place at the South Service Center as 200 employees went to training camp to refresh mandatory safety skills. This way, the training is completed in a short period of time 
rather than scheduled throughout the year. Primarily, I think it improves the safety attitude, safety awareness. Everybody is doing uh, this training program together. We've got civil construction. We've got uh, overhead as well as uh, vegetation management. And we've al also included some people over in the operations that uh, needed some confined space training. But I think it, it helps improve the general safety awareness of everybody. Six different programs were offered, including the essential pole top rescue operation. Vault Rescue trains the crews to respond to emergencies in electrical vaults. And gas monitoring training allows crews who don't normally use this equipment to become familiar with it, so they'll know what to expect if an emergency arises. Well, I'll probably be a little nervous, I'm sure of that, but, you know, just going through this, you know, it'll uh, probably all come back to me, you know, and I'll be able to maybe save somebody's life, help somebody, you know, if something does happen like that. Hope it never does, but I'll be ready for it. Just training, that, that's why I think this training is very good for that. Helps everybody uh, keep that in the back of their mind. Crews, instructors, safety staff, and management will evaluate the training to see if this type of training can be used at other locations. City Light crews aren't the only ones who are completing important training. This month brings graduation for three City Light employees who have completed the Preparation for Supervision program. It's a city-sponsored series of 18 months of classes through Seattle Community College to prepare employees for supervision. The graduates are Mike Thompson of Safety, Health, and Wellness, Lynn Boyce, Steel Shop, South Service Center, Steve Leonard, North Service Center, Warehouse. PREP is essentially uh, designed for people who want to become supervisors, but even if that isn't what you end up doing. The things you learn in PrEP will help you no matter what kind of job you want to do here at the utility or anywhere else for that matter. Uh, they, they spend about two quarters on management principles, but most of the program really is about communicating, either uh, written communications or public speaking, dealing with uh, angry people, whether they're employees or other managers or supervisors. And there's some other things like, uh, oh, how to run meetings and things like that. And I think those are good skills for anyone for basically any job, uh, particularly here at City Light. I, I can't think of any position where good communication skills wouldn't help you. I really think that without this program that I wouldn't have been capable of, of doing this crew chief's job at all. I would have, I would have run at the first sign of conflict and I think I would have been smothered under the administrative load. Uh, it has, it's helped me to deal with just the day-to-day -day problems that we have as a crew. Um, I think I'm really lucky because my crew is like the cream of the crop, I think, and, and there, we, we don't have hardly any problems. Anything that has come up, we have discussed as a team and figured out the, the best course to follow. And that's another thing I learned in this, is team building, how important it is. And, how, and if you work as, as a team, everybody's so much happier. The PrEP program uh, prepares you in terms of organization. Uh, it prepares you to deal with personnel uh, professionally in terms of development, uh, utilizing their potential, and helping them achieve their potential. Uh, at the same time, it uh, gives you the basic tools in terms of communication, uh, written and oral, um, planning, organizing, and directing in any sense of supervising or where you might find yourself. It's a universal program in that respect. Uh, a lot of us in the PrEP program have never really been in management. Some of us managed to win positions, uh, and they have a very high success rate. I, I think that, that it's a great program. A new PrEP series begins each year. If you're interested, talk with your supervisor. It was the day of the Condor at Salmon Bay Steel as the heavy equipment was brought in to upgrade service as the plant expands. The job was estimated to last 48 hours, during which time the customer would lose $3,000 per minute while service was shut down. The more than 40 City Light employees involved in the job improved upon their own best guess, completing the work in a record 25 hours, providing money saving, quality customer service.
You know, many of you took the time to respond to the call for employees to participate with NTV. Here are the entries. We received over 50 applications. Now, we'll be planning auditions for some time in May and calling those of you who took the time to submit an idea or who are interested in reporting on a story from your area of work. We're excited about so much interest in NTV. Thanks. Well, that wraps up this edition of NTV from the Buell and Hoffman substation in North Seattle. Remember, you can view previous issues of NTV by calling us at 684-3112. We'll send out the tapes for you to view. We'll see you next month. For NTV, I'm Terry Kikita. And I'm Sharon Bennett. Bye-bye. <laughs>